Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Harris and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Wollongong in Australia. Today I'm going to be talking about a multi-level multivariate meta-analysis that we conducted with the metaphor package in R to evaluate the impact of preeclampsia on offspring blood pressure. Um, in studies pertaining to cardiovascular health, systolic and diastolic blood pressure are key outcomes of interest and are both usually reported in primary studies such as randomized trials and cohort studies. Um, and these outcomes are characterized as dependent. And what we mean when we talk about dependence is that the outcomes are correlated, in this case, highly correlated. Um, and this means that knowing information about one outcome reveals some information about the other. When conducting a naive um, pairwise meta-analysis, dependent outcomes cannot be pulled together um, because doing so would violate the assumption that effect sizes are independent um, and from a different sample. And this is because the model doesn't distinguish between the different data structures. So the actual structure of the data um, is as shown here, where systolic and diastolic blood pressure are measured in the same participants. But in an naive pairwise meta-analysis, the statistical model assumes that the effect sizes are from a different unrelated sample. Um, and this is true even if the outcomes are different. Um, and this is problematic, uh, mainly due to the artificial increase in the sample size, and this, le this leads to confidence intervals that are much too narrow. An appropriate approach to combine multiple dependent outcomes um, in a meta-analysis model is through multi-level multi modeling, um, which accounts for the dependence between the outcomes by specifying in the statistical model how each effect size is nested um, in the included study. So as shown um, in the illustration here, if a study reports both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, we can add another level of variance at level two. So this is basically an extension of a random effect um, two level model with an additional tau squared uh, variance component for the multiple outcomes. So now we have three levels of variance. Um, the correlation coefficient between systolic and diastolic blood pressure um, is not required, and this is because um, this is advantageous because um, correlations are often not reported in the original studies. So we used a case study of preeclampsia and offspring blood pressure to illustrate an example um, of systolic and diastolic blood pressure in a multi level meta analysis. So a bit of a background about preeclampsia. Um, it's a health condition during pregnancy characterized by new onset hypertension. Um, so hypertension that um, occurs after 20 weeks of gestation um, and occurs alongside maternal organ dysfunction or fetal growth restriction. Although the cause is not well understood, observational cohort studies have provided some evidence that preeclampsia is associated um, with an increase in blood pressure through, um, through childhood and adolescence. There has, have been some previous meta-analyses on this topic, um, which use standard pairwise um, univariate meta-analysis. Um, and this means that they dealt with the dependence between systolic and diastolic blood pressure by conducting separate analyses for each outcome. Another important um, component of the structure of the data in this particular case study um, is the longitudinal nature of the effect measures. So because participants in the studies were followed for a long period of time, um, there were often multiple measures um, of both systolic and diastolic blood pressure in each sample. Uh, most of the previous meta-analyses selected um, one time point to extract data from, but there was one previous meta-analysis which included multiple, multiple follow-ups as if they were independent um, and therefore violating the independence assumption. Um, longitudinal data can be included um, in a multi-level meta-analysis by just considering um, that um, the different time points as different outcomes also nested within each sample. So this brings us to our current project and our aim was to conduct, to conduct a systematic review and meta-analysis to compare blood pressure of offspring board to preeclamptic and normotensive pregnancies. We registered our protocol in Prospero and to search for um, articles we searched the PubMed, CINAHL and Embase databases from their inception to January 31st 2022. Um, and we searched the citations of included um, cohort studies and previous reviews, as well as conducted forward citation searching using Google Scholar. Uh, for our selection criteria, participants could be any age, including from infancy to older age. Um, and they were included if they reported systolic or diastolic blood pressure on a continuous scale. Um, and this could be millimeters of mercury, but could also be percentile scores or standard deviation scores. We conducted title and abstract screening using Abstracker, um, and this was done um, by two re uh, review authors in duplicate independently. 
Um, and to assess the within study risk of bias, we used the Robbins E tool for observational studies. Um, and this was again conducted by two review authors in duplicate. When looking at observational evidence, it's very important to take into account that there could be um, confounders which affect the relationship between the exposure and the outcome. Um, so this is a graph showing the confounders and mediators of interest. Um, the main confounders of interest um, were maternal smoking and drinking during pregnancy, um, education or socioeconomic status, maternal parity, age, ethnicity, or pre-pregnancy BMI. Um, we also made the important distinction between confounders and mediators um, because mediators lie on the causal pathway. So they could, um, because they occur after development of PE, it's not appropriate um, to adjust for these. So therefore we only um, pulled results from studies which had adjusted for all relevant confounding factors and did not adjust for any mediators. For our analysis, we chose to pull Hedges G standardized mean differences um, to enable us um, to pull effect sizes which were expressed as um, percentile scores and standard deviation scores with those from other cohorts um, which were expressed in millimeters of mercury. Um, and because effect sizes were adjusted for confounders using multiple regression models, we also included a correction factor when calculating these to account for the fact that the variability around the, around the mean difference decreases as the number of variables in the reg regression model increases. So this is the code we used to conduct the multi-level meta-analysis. Um, and also on the right, you can see the data set and how it was set up in long format. So we first created dummy variables um, for systolic and diastolic blood pressure um, to be used as moder moderators um, in the model. And this enabled us to get a pooled effect for both outcomes separately. And then to run the meta-analysis, um, we used the rma.mv command available in the metaphor package. And we specified the effect size and variance um, shown here. And we used the mods argument for the regression to um, obtain uh, different uh, um, effects for systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And importantly, we used the random argument um, and this was to specify how each um, effect size was nested inside each cohort. Um, and we used restricted maximum likelihood estimator for the level two and level three variability. So these are the results from our study selection. Um, there were 2,423 unique reports identified from database searching and 12 unique reports from citation searching. Um, and after full text screening, there were 55 reports of 42 um, 42 cohorts. However, like I mentioned before, because we only pulled um, pulled data from the um, cohorts which were adjusted for confounders, um, there were only seven cohorts included in data analysis. So um, here are the results from our multi-level meta-analysis um, as shown in the forest plot. So here we have the systolic blood pressure um, and the standardized mean difference and the diastolic blood pressures standardized mean difference um, pooled. So there were only small increases in, in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And when we re-expressed the um, standardized mean differences into millimeters of mercury, we had a 1.69 uh, millimeter of mercury difference in systolic blood pressure and a very small 0.65 millimeters for diastolic blood pressure. So here are uh, the results from our risk of bias assessment. Um, overall, there was a low risk of bias in most domains. Um, but there were some concerns um, due to missing data, um, mostly due to the long follow-up of the cohorts. Uh, and this led to all studies being rated as some concerns um, overall. The main interpretation of our findings is that um, offspring born to preeclectic pregnancies do have higher systolic um, and diastolic blood pressure when compared to normotensive um, pregnancies. Um, but this difference was much smaller than previously reported um, due to the fact that we correctly specified how dependent outcomes were nested um, in the cohorts. Um, and it's not clear um, if these small differences in blood pressure are significant enough to infer a clinically meaningful difference in adverse um, cardiovascular outcomes in later life, such as heart attack and stroke. Here are our references, and thank you so much for watching.